here we go. You'll see that I'm slowly creeping and I got them right there. You know, out here in the California Delta, my goodness gracious. I hope that getting better. Oh, catch the release, huh? Delta black crappie. Stuff. You know what these are, Dave? What? It's a fish fry, baby. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I'm out fishing the California Delta for crappie. But I'm gonna be breaking down techniques that'll work anywhere you choose to target these bad boys across the country, so let's dive on in. It's out here in the East Delta, in uh, it's, uh, January 5th today. I'm double jigging for some crappie right now with a bucktail on the bottom and then a little uh, Chartreuse and red, I believe, is what I got on there right now. Plastic, and uh, Dave's throwing a little marabou and a blue and white. And we're hopping them up off the bottom right now. Even though it's a real overcast day, the crappie, uh, they haven't been balled up too tight. They've been basically spread out all over this one cove. We are power fishing through, you know, just coming around, covering a lot of water fast to try to detect that first strike or get that first hook up by fishing a little bit faster. And then, you know, sit in that spot and break it down and really pick it apart and start float fishing and everything and we got a few already and uh, so now we're just starting to hop it up off the bottom we're trying to hone in on the most effective technique we got going right now using slip floats uh, double jigs and got them there we go when searching for crappie summer and winter patterns are very similar they're in large loosely packed schools generally within that 10 to 40 foot water column depending on the light of the day if it's low light they're gonna be up shallow if it's high light they're gonna be moving down deeper on that structure and cover. So look for ledges, boat docks, trees, lay downs, things of that sort. In the spring, when that water temperature reaches the upper 50s, they're gonna be moving into shallow protected coves, looking for lay downs to spawn all the way into that low 60 mark before they move back out. Then when fall rolls around, what you're gonna be focusing on is bait fish. They're gonna to tend to follow the bait fish back into the creek arms and start eating them up on them then. So remember, these are structure and cover oriented fish, so use good electronics. They look like an upside down Christmas tree 75% of the time on your graph. Um, and if they're in shallow water, a lot of the time you're gonna have a tough time finding them. So search a lot of targets and work slowly and very stealth and you'll end up running go. into them. Now when it comes to the lures that we're selecting when we're crappie fishing, there's a variety of lures out there. Um, from your little minnow style baits to your gitsits, um, to your little spinners with jigs on them like that, road runners, miniature crankbaits. Well, how do you go through and select all this? And I'll tell you how we do it. We show them everything until we find out what they're keying in on. Uh, crappie, day by day, seem to focus in on a different color, a different pattern, whether they want a natural marabou type of jig with the real little feathers on there, or they want some little synthetic plastic jig like this with a little blue or black head. So a lot of the time when you see crappie fishermen out there, they have such a variety of things going to figure out what those crappie are honing in on. So let me show you a couple little things real quick here to help you get it figured out. Now, these are like your most common style little standard crappie jigs. There's a million different makers, a million different companies. I'm not gonna get into that too deep. But what you wanna do with these guys is you wanna get little jig heads little jig heads like this. And what you do is you insert that through the back of the body down into that little jig head. And once you drive it all the way up through the body, and once you get it through the body, you're gonna feel the little eyelet of the hook. So you just start rubbing your fingernail against the plastic and that little eyelet will work itself through just like that and you tie on to there. Um, that's how you rig those little jigs. Now there's a variety of weights with these little jig heads, you know, from 30 seconds ounce, 130 seconds ounce to 116 ounce, and you just keep coming up from there. So that's a good little range. Uh, 116 is a little bit uh, on the bottom end for you to get started working with. I wouldn't suggest going anything lighter. And you see the hook size on this? This is like a number two size hook right here. When we're crappie fishing, we're gonna be using a lot of number twos, number ones, one aught, and sometimes even two aught for your bigger ones. But when you're first getting started, I suggest a number one. And that'll be a good versatile hook size for you to use, um, even on your jigs. And get the 1 16th ounce jig heads to start off with. This jig head's inserted into the body. This is for casting and hopping it along because the jig's actually making contact with the bottom 
In this jig head, I slide it back up to the tail end of the jig and you can see that the eye is exposed and there's a pointed nose on there. That's when we're moving, trolling along, this comes through the grass a lot better. So there's gonna be a variety of jig, uh, jig heads to select out there to perfect your presentation a little bit better than the next. There's a third crappie of the morning, white marabou. We're spider rigging back in here. This is where I was on them the other day. They haven't seemed to move it out. Uh, we lost a couple of fish spider rigging. I think we're a little bit too high, so got Marsh in the back dropping our position down a little bit and we keep rocking the boat up here. They're getting hit, um, but it's really taking a real good hook set to land them because they're biting real finicky right now. So the jigging I'm talking about, let me show you. I'm gonna reel up, I just missed a strike right here. So I'm gonna take my jigs, shoot them on out there. I'm gonna make sure it gets down. I'm gonna you know, watch my line flicker under and let it get down into the depth there to where if I jig it around, I'm hopefully gonna be in their face because I already figured out they're on the bottom. If they are up top, I'd be jigging a little bit sooner. So I'm down now and with a real limber rod, I can do this with the tip and keep throwing action. I'm dancing my jigs around and I'm just slowly creeping. If you look down here at my hand, you'll see that I'm slowly creeping and I got them right there. Little baby bluegill. <laughs> that action, when you keep wiggling the rod tip like that, it just puts so much lifelike action into your jigs versus dragging it or just hopping it. It just gives them that irresistible little reaction strike as soon as it gets in front of their face. Now when selecting your lure, you have to understand things like this little curly tail grub right here. Moving slower, this is gonna have a lot more action. Uh, so that might intrigue them when it's moving real slow and that tail's kicking around uh, versus something like this where you have to physically move it to throw action into that little skirt right there. Then you have the miniature crankbait. This has a lot of fast action. This might be too much on a lot of days and sometimes you might have to go back to that grub. So by using that variety, you're gonna give them a lot of different things to look at and you're gonna figure out what they're hitting. And a good rule of thumb when you're crappie fishing, slower and slower and slower rather than faster, 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 we all have the tendency when we're fishing to become impatient. Now with crappie fishing, we're running down trying to find them in a lot of places. So we get anxious and we start moving too fast and that's where a lot of crappie fishermen end up failing. Oh yeah. Oh. oh yeah. That's a chunk. That is a chunk right there. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, what do we have here? You know what these are, Dave? What? It's a fish fry, baby. We should do that simultaneously. Oh. Wasn't that simultaneous? Not really. I wasn't sure if you were We staged this. We actually hired these fish. Uh, to hit this jig right there. So I'm just gonna be honest and let you guys know, uh, these are professional actors. These these are, I would say, a little bit more on the educated side of the crappie world. I don't wanna put any oh. other crappie down, but they're hired actors, so we're just gonna go ahead and release these ones. Uh, six minnows a piece, that's not a bad deal, honestly. That's not a bad deal. All right, we'll go ahead and release these guys into the well um, so we can put them in a frying pan. Oh yeah, fish fry. Oh up yeah, top. up top. Stay with us guys, crappie rigging is coming up next. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And when it comes to spooling up my reels, I choose nothing less than the best. And that's why I use P-Line each and every time. Are you fishing the best? Hey, lion baby. <laughs> Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Poll, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.RCFishingWorld.com today.
Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today so go to www.rustylures.com have you had the chance to fish the baddest hoochie on the market today that's right i'm talking about the shasta tackle wiggle hoochie one of the most dynamic reaction trout and salmon lures that runs second to no other for pulling and triggering fish into striking so i guess the real question is are you catching all the fish you should be catching thanks for watching guys now let's get back to slabbing i'm just gonna go ahead and cast over you while you're busy catching fish here this one hides under the boat. You know, out here in the California Delta, my goodness gracious, um, when I'm looking for crappie, I look for edges near, near the current. I look for high current areas and then slack spots next to them. Um, so marinas often serve that purpose. We, you know, we're in a marina right here, but we're only Three, three rows in from the boat docks. It, the water temperature right now is about 48 degrees, so the decomposition of the plant life in the back of this cove is gonna be extremely high. So throughout the year, when you have all these crappies sitting in the back of the marinas, what happens is when the winter happens, you start getting all that plant life to die off and it consumes oxygen. So what's gonna happen is the bait fish and everything is gonna move up tighter uh, to the mouth of the marina. It's protected. But now the marina size for where they could have been shrank. So if you search out those first few slips, the odds of finding crappie there are much higher than in the back. It's just like bass. You know, when it starts to, when the plant life's decomposing, the shad don't want to be there anymore. There's no oxygen for them. They start cramming up and crappie like that protected water. So marinas in the winter time can be phenomenal for crappie. So the first rig I want to show you is a float rig. The type of rod and reel and line I'm setting a float rig up on is about a seven to seven and a half foot spinning rod. The generally the main line I want to use on there is about 10 pound test and then the little leader going down to my jig. I'm generally using about four to six pound tests. When you guys are first getting started, I'm gonna suggest six. It's a little bit more for forgiving for you guys. Yeah, your lure doesn't get quite the perfect action. You're gonna catch a lot more fish and have a lot less headaches using six. So start off with six pound. That line I'm using right there is P-Line Floor Clear Line. Incredible stuff, great for crappie fishing. Now this float rig, I'm gonna show you exactly what I have here. Right on my main line, you see this little knot right there, this little guy? That is a slip stop. Basically, you can slide it up and down your line with a little bit of pressure. It comes on a little sleeve. You slide your line through it and you slide the knot off. There's gonna be two long strings. You pull on each end to tighten it down. You clip off the tag ends and then it's also gonna come with a bead. What you're gonna do from there is you're gonna slide your bead up to the line right to that knot. Then you're gonna put on your slip float. That's this guy here. The benefit about a slip float, let's say the fish are six foot deep, and if I had a six foot long leader trying to cast it, it's going to be very clumbersome. Instead, I can set this little knot at six foot deep. My bobber and everything are going to slide back here to a really short leader. I have about a foot here, and I only have to cast a foot, and then this slip bobber is going to slide all the way up to that knot, and I know my bait's going to be down six foot deep. Crappie are very sentimental about the depth, bright daylight. Um, they're going to move down deeper, low light, they're going to come up shallow. So a lot of the times you're going to have to adjust your depth on the fly. This is why a slip bobber is very nice for that. Plus, when it's down there and the fish bites it and you set the hook, there's no resistance. So the hook's getting them. You don't have that suction of a float working back against you. And you always want your float to sit like that. If you don't have enough weight, it'll be leaning off to the side. So add a couple of split shot on your line, those little Pac-Man looking lead weights there. Pinch them on there to where your float does sit in this position here. Uh, from there, I have a little barrel swivel, and this is where I attach my leader. That's where I'm attaching that, ladder, uh, that lighter line, and then I have my little jig tied on right to the bottom right here. Now, if you don't want to use a jig and you want to use minnows, which is extremely um, effective for crappie, let me show you what to do. Now, I have the jig head tied on here, and some people will use a jig head when fishing with a minnow. 
A lot of the time you're going to be using a live bait hook and that's where I would suggest that uh, size one live bait hook. Now let's take this little uh, plastic little plastic fish right here. You see this guy, same thing, little plastic minnows. Let's take for an example, this is a real one. Now you don't want to hook your minnow right through the center of the body, otherwise you're going to wound the thing and he's going to die a lot faster and he's not going to intrigue any crappie to come up and strike him. Instead you want to come through like one of the top fins and the tail end of them. Just like so to where they'll hang off and they'll want to swim down a lot and they'll stay real lively because you didn't hit them in any of the main organs inside his body to wound them. They'll stay lively a lot longer. They'll really intrigue those crappie to come up and strike them at that point. So that's how you want to hook up your uh, live minnow there. So when we first start tracking them down, like I said, when you go into the mouth of the marina and you start working around, well, how do you know? Right now we're keyed into them and we're probably fishing maybe a uh, 65 to 80 foot round circle area that we've keyed in on a mat. How we found this was, we're moving up and down the boat docks, fishing jigs, bouncing jigs off the bottom, doing jigs through the mid depth, throwing floats up next to the pilings and shaking the jig right there to suspend it. And I'm moving through on my trolling motor, doing about one mile an hour for each one. Uh, Dave will work one side of the boat, I was working the other side of the boat. If we don't get hit going through there, as we go back out, we fish the bottom, uh, in that mid-depth in between, right down the alleys right there. If we don't get hit, we pretty much leave it alone. Uh, you need to try working it real slow. Real slow is key. If you're working too fast with your baits, you're just really not going to get hit. And how we found the crappie in this spot is I threw up next to one of the ends of the boat docks. It's kind of like a piling where the boat docks tied on and I know there's a cross member under the water right there that's going to hold them. So when I throw up to the end of the little corners, you know, right there next to the boats. When I throw up to those corners, I will throw my float right there and I'll just slowly twitch it and then let it sit. And what happened is I got a clear indication that it was a crappie bite. I didn't hook the fish, but what happened is my slip bobber drifted to the side because crappie, more than any other species, tend to grab your lure and keep swimming sideways. They don't dunk it half the time. And when I see my bobber, slip over to the side. I said, that's a crappie bite, guys. We need to stop here. I turned on my spot lock, then we started jigging, throwing the floats, and then we've been picking them apart ever since. But literally, we spent probably the first two and a half to three hours of the day searching for them. And you have to realize that pressure and that search, that hunt you're doing, is going to pay off once you find them, because they're a schooling species. On action. Woo, woo. Get away from that trolling motor. Woo. Back to back right there. Look at that. Oh, look at that slabby. Oh, yeah. Slab that. I'm going to swing them. I'm going to swing them. I don't suggest doing that. Normally, you want to bring a net to help land these guys, but uh, I'm fooling around. I knew I'd land a lot of fish, so I'm not overly concerned. Just swinging them. Uh, I think uh, it's about 10, so... I'm going to be a conservationist and start letting them go after this guy right here. I'm just bringing enough to feed everybody that's part of the barbecue. I'm not trying to stock up the freezer. You know, if I was going to stock up the freezer, I'm giving this guy potentially more time to spawn and reproduce more fish like this for a good time for everybody. So remember that, guys. Don't keep everything you catch. Keep enough just to eat and let the rest go. Good one, too. So here's the first fish on the other side. Ugh, is that my very first cast? That's the way it should go every time. A little better caliber fish there. Doubles. Now here's the rod I'm using when you see me out there in the video that I'm using for jigging. I'm not using a float. I have a little 16th ounce marabou right there. That's that real natural feather, that real little uh, light looking one right there. Uh, this guy's real subtle, move real slow. The little feathers kick around. It really intrigues those crappie to strike. So that's why I was using that one. And then as you come right up my line, you're gonna see about a foot up the line, I have another hook tied on 
with another jig completely opposite color because I want to show them multiple presentations to figure out what they want. If they kept hitting this black, red, and chartreuse, well, that's what I would start using and switch this guy out. Instead of giving them one thing and saying, hey, they're not biting, try an assortment of things. Crappie are not bothered by bright colors and a variety of lures passing them. They will strike one or the other, so keep sending them through the whole ringer and let them pick one or the other. Um, so I have that little 16th ounce on here. This one's weightless to another size two hook. And then I'm just coming right back up into my rod. The rod that I'm using right here is an ultra light rod. This is only a five and a half foot rod. This is a moderate action, means bend right in the middle, but this is almost moderate slow. It almost bends all the way back to the handle. This is 100% full parabolic bend. You see that load that I can put in this rod just like that? This thing's incredible. This is why you see me setting the hook fast and hard on this guy, and it's no problem. I'm not tearing through those feather-like crappie mouths. I'm putting just enough pressure on them, load up. I'm using two pound fluorocarbon on here, but when you're starting out, I'm gonna suggest six pound line always. Um, I'm just very effective at using this and I know where my breaking strength is. And you always wanna make sure you have your drag set accordingly for crappie to wear. It's not too tight to where you are gonna rip the hook free. In that case, if I jerk it real quick, hear that drag, that's gonna save you. And it's also gonna prevent that hook from ripping out of that fish. Yeah, that sounds like a better one. Keep away from the oh, yeah, Another decent one right there. Man fry. Man fry. Got one on. Just as easy as that, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo. He's a little on the smaller side. I'm gonna let him go. So what we got going on here is we're inside the marina. We're still crappie fishing here and we're gonna be doing a little spider rigging. And on the California Delta, I don't like carrying the normal gear for spider rigging, you know, those 12, 13, 14 foot long rods. In the Delta, it hardly ever gets over 15 foot deep. So I'm using 13 foot cane rods right here. So I, all I have to do is raise my tips in the rod holder to adjust to my depth, whether the can end on the bottom or higher up, I'll hold it vertical. The cane rod's so limber, once that crappie gets it with that full parabolic bend, it holds the hooks on them. I know I'm on my iPilot uh, remote right here for my Taroba up there and I can control myself just right outside the slips right here to see if they're keying in on the cover or structure early on in the morning. And then I'm using the quarter ounce weights and pulling double jigs on the outside to make sure I stay close to the bottom. You can see the lines are starting to tail back a little on this side. I'm only using the 16th ounce jig heads on these and running single grubs to try to get them to raise up and down. And how I put a little bit of action in it, I simply lean side to side in my boat and you can see the rod tips are jigging. So I could throw action into literally six, uh, six jigs right now. Um, we just hooked up one, but basically I found them early on in the coves and that was the other day. So today we're gonna start a little further out, um, spider rig as we move back. And once we get on them, we're gonna pull out the floats and the jigs at that point and start casting for them. So now you see me spider rigging. Now I'm gonna show you how to rig it. This is those cane rods right there. Look at this guy, this thing's only about two and a half, three foot long. But if you read right there, it's 13 feet long. This cane rods, they don't have reels on them. Basically, I'm gonna unhook this jig here and let you take a look. Try not to stab myself on film, it wouldn't be a first. So here's the tip on this cane rod. They have that bright chartreuse wrap right there on the tip and I have my knot tied directly on. I'm using six pound line on here. When this thing's out 13 foot, look at the bend in this thing. Um, what I do is I measure my leader all the way back out to the handle to where I can hook it back on if we need to make a run in the boat. And I can subtract, I can say, well, it's about a foot and a half to there to where if I have my rod tip touching the water, I know my jig is 13 feet deep because I'm using a 13 foot long rod, subtract a foot, so realistically my line is 12 feet deep. So all I have to do, if I see on my graph that it's 10 foot deep, all I have to do is lift my rod tip just a couple more feet and I can estimate that line depth. 
If you're fishing lakes where you're fishing 25, 30 foot deep, you're gonna have to use those longer spinning outfits with the reel so you can get down there and get on them. But when you're fishing shallow water, cane rods are extremely effective. Also, when you come up on a brush pile, if you have kids in the boat, you can take a cane rod. They don't have to deal with casting. They can lower it right down into that brush pile and catch them, lift them right up and swing them back to the boat. And you don't have to worry about line tangles or a big mess with your cane rods. And these guys are a real blast to fish with. Now on my spider rigging, a lot of the time I'm gonna use a leader still and run it about two or three foot down. Use a little barrel swivel and have an egg weight on there. Um, what that does is it helps me when I'm trolling along and when I'm trolling on my spider rig, I'm usually going one, one mile an hour to one and a half mile an hour, uh, sometimes down to a half if I'm right on top of them and I'll circle right around and they'll keep whacking it. But if you wanna make a quick adjustment, and you don't want to have that weight on there, let's say you want to use your cane rod to take it out and start jigging them once you find them, you can use these little inline weights right here with the little rubber grips on them to where you can pull it out, snap it on your line, and snap it right back off to where you can toss that jig back out. Um, I carry a lot of these guys. I'll even clip on extra split shots at times um, to where if I'm trolling along and I see too much line, ang line angle out behind me, I'll add another one of these inline weights to hold my line straight down to where I know those crappie will be. Okay. Getting better. Now you said you want to keep it? Yeah. Keep it at least 10. Here, Michael, pass it on you. I guess you're the. There's another keeper. Here, <laughs> <laughs> Strike right Woo! in there. Surprised you uh, caught that one. <laughs> Here you can see that I slid some little crappie niblets up the shank of my hook right there. Uh, this little extra scent, as soon as they come up, and a lot of the time if they're just not overly intrigued by your jig at that point, it's right there in their face. It's a little something tasty, a little something extra. This is going to increase your bite ratio, but I guarantee it's a good 50%. You're going to get double the amount of strikes. Marsh with the crappie! <laughs> Abducted! Go. That's a better one. And that's crappie fishing with Nick the Informative Fisherman. This episode is dedicated to you, little Kevin. Get out there and catch some more fish, buddy. We'll see you next time, guys.